the mail today. Uh, when Jeremy first approached me about this, um, we thought it was a good idea. Uh, we don't have uh, any coastal command uh, display in here. And so, <laughs> as you can see from looking at the place, we're extremely crowded and we don't have a lot of room. But uh, we did make room for this and uh, we're very proud to have it in here. And uh, what we'll do, I think, is we'll have our guests of honor. Um, and if you want to help them, Jeremy, and, and whoever else you want to assist, uh, we'll just have a little piece of tape on either side. So somebody on either side can Mom, unveil it. No. Yeah. So we'll get the, the uh, children of Grandpa Harold. Okay. All right. Okay. On three, one, two, three. There we go. And there he is in the center. Wow, that's good. Is, is that his real flight helmet? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. An article that wrote about when he got in the field, and that message in dispatches, and the reception we wrote. And cool. At yeah, the moment where. I'll just read the uh, signage we put underneath uh, <laughs> as of this morning, actually. Uh, the above display highlights the experiences of Flight Lieutenant H.P. Florence from Foam Lake, Saskatchewan. He was flying as a crew member with 407 Squadron, RCAF, in a Wellington bomber from Coastal Command on anti-submarine patrol during late November 1944. Their aircraft attacked a German submarine four times be before sinking it with depth charges and display courtesy of Jeremy Dons. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's my son. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there it is, folks. Um, you can have a so what we have here is, look. is the actual news clipping from Foam Lake where they described that run. We have his logbook copy of where it happened, attacked, uh, surface sub, the time, uh, the captain, and um, just the different patrols he was on, and uh, we actually have his uh, logbook in another display that we have. Um, just highlighting, this was the crew, the gen crew they called it, and that meant, because you flew with many, many different people uh, throughout your uh, career in the war, and that the gen crew meant the best of the best. So that's how he described his and then behind the crew there is a Wellington yeah. bomber with a geodetic design. Yeah. And Sir Barnes Wallace, who designed the bouncing bomb for the dams rate, also designed the Wellington bomber. Oh, now, who can explain the three airmen standing on the submarine? Does there anybody knows the story behind this? My understanding is uh, one is Grandpa Harold of those three men. Yeah, and that's a captured submarine. Yeah, that they're doing a tour of. Okay, now you notice it says UK two one seven five one. Okay, that's an official government photo, so I can find you uh, an, an eight by ten of that photo uh, with the caption if you want it. I would love that because those UK numbers are kept in yeah. Ottawa. Promotional photos. So, yeah, yeah. we've got some bigger that say proof on it. Yeah. yeah. And that's his flight helmet. His actual one the ground kept all these years. Wow. And that's his that's his uh, tour wings. When you were finished a tour, you got those. What did they have to do for a tour in coastal command? It was quite considerably longer than a bomber command tour. Yeah, more than thirty. Yeah. Yeah. And there were 415, Royal Canadian Air Force Squadron 405 flew, it was a bomber squadron, it flew with Coastal Command. There were so many battles with U-boats out there trying to sink the convoys that they actually sent bombers out with these Coastal Command guys to try and defend against the U-boats. 405 Squadron mm -hmm. flew Coastal Command for a while, 415 Squadron of the Royal Canadian Air Force flew Coastal Command. Uh, 407 Demon Squadron was part of Coastal Command. 
422 Squadron of the Royal Canadian Air Force was with Coastal Command, and so was 423. So Canada's contribution is large. And what you need to know besides that is the British squadrons that were in Coastal Command, one out of every seven airmen that was on those bombers of Coastal Command of the British squadrons was a Canadian. 14% of the rest of the squadrons were Canadian. So we weren't whistling Dixie here. The Royal Canadian Air Force was big and strong in Coastal Command. And as an aside, our Lancaster sitting right out there flew with 407 Squadron for four years out at Comox after the war. After the war on anti-submarine patrol. Gee. Only it was Russian subs they were looking for instead of German. <laughs>